Nothing like going way back. Be you steadfast. Our truth is always the founder. The work of the Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you tonight. We acknowledge you tonight for who you are. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for calling us to be your people. Thank you for letting us be recipients of your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your steadfast love, your patience that you've shown toward us. Thank you, God. We glorify your name tonight. We magnify you and we lift you up. And God, we don't want this moment to pass that you think that we know that we made it here by ourselves. But God, we openly confess tonight that if it had not been for you, who's on our side, oh God. And so here we are tonight, oh God, to give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. For we know, God, it was by your grace and it was by your mercy. So thank you for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for feeding us tonight. Thank you for the bread that feed our physical body. And we thank you for the bread that shall feed our spiritual soul. Feed us tonight, O oh God. Open the gates of heaven. Feed us tonight. And whatever we're thirsting for of that is of righteousness, oh God, give it to us. Have mercy, we pray. And God, we give your name the glory. But old man Jones, while he was attending the universe, the honor. Have you been tried? And the praise. 
speak now, God. Your people hear you. Speak, oh God. For we come expecting to hear from you. And get your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. So many people claim to know this Christian way. Y'all ready? But tell me, how can you do it? Is you ready? Yeah. All right, let's see what y'all bring in. Any questions? Yeah. I got two questions, actually. Okay. First one is uh, okay. Start with. Okay, start is it where we've been or where we're going? I don't know where we at. I remember I was gone, so I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Um, um chapter, we're in chapter three. You in chapter? No, you way ahead. You way ahead. Yeah. We on birth three. <laughs> 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 So okay, so all both your questions in chapter three. Nah, well one is the two, one is the. Yeah, three. we'll get that by Christmas. Okay. The way y'all going. <laughs> For those of y'all joining us online, is Jonah? It's in the book of Jonah. Let me just say the book of Jonah. All right. So that kill you? They, they knock out your question? Yeah. Yeah. All right, but go ahead. Just let's ask them just to see what. what um, so, in chapter three. Okay. Uh, verse. One minute. Uh, chapter three. Okay. Uh, verse three, chapter. I mean, uh, number five. Verse five. Mm -hmm. And the people of Nazareth uh, believed Nineveh. God. Huh? Nineveh. Nineveh believed God. And they called for a fast and put staff cloth from the greatness of them and the, and the least of them. Okay. Now, see, I don't understand that. Like, okay, what part? What part is believe? When they, okay, when they said fast, he proclaimed the fast. Right. Okay. So when they the fast and the staff cloth, like, what is that? The sackcloth. Yeah. Is what they use is the garment that they put on when they were fasting. It was a fasting garment. Okay, so and, it, it said, in the greatest of them, the, the least of them, mm -hmm. the greatest of them and the least of them, meaning what? The top to the bottom? From the ones who think they're real important to the bottom, to the ones who don't think they're important. From the peasant to the king. Okay. And everybody in between. So the other one was in, in two. Okay. So when he prayed for the when he when he prayed, right? So uh -huh. he prayed for three days, okay. but then he promised that <coughs> he would give up. I'm sorry, chapter two, y'all. Chapter two, number one. I think it's one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then Jonah prayed in the Lord he got from the belly of the fish, saying, "I call out to the Lord of, of my distress, and to answer me out the belly soul, I cry, and you and you heard my voice." Uh -huh. For you cast me into the deep, into the, the heart of the sea, and the flood surrounded me, and all your waves and your, your bellows passed me over. So, in other words, okay, let's put it in our terms. In other words, that we go through something, we pray for three days? That's what you need. Jonas just, he's, he's telling you how long he was in the belly of the fish. Then he tells you what he did when he was in the belly of the fish. So, 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 then, so God gave him another chance. Give him a second chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want you to hang on to that. No, he never intended on. No, he didn't. He never planned on killing himself. He said second chance. Not what well, he told him to go. Well, I guess in the in the thing it said give him a second chance, give him, give him a second chance because he he sent him to the way he's 
Mm-hmm. So he told him where he's supposed to go. Mm-hmm. Be yeah, so he had to be obedient. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, how could you apply that to life? Who you asked me? Yeah. One million. Okay. I didn't get that far. How to apply it to your life? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm reading it, but I understand. I'm still trying to understand it okay. because I'm I'm still number two is the the three days you're in the belly, you know, mm-hmm. three days, and you know getting a second chance and all that stuff. So okay, and, and I think I, and I really want you to hang on to that. Uh, is everybody need to hang on to that because it'll help you deal with what you're dealing with. Right. Any, any other questions? Because Keeman always asks us a question that take us <laughs> somewhere. Any other questions? Okay. How did everybody feel about Bible study last week? Did, did y'all meditate on it? Right. Uh. And, and that's what we want to do. We, we, we want to take that and not just let that moment be over, uh, but to take it and, and let it take root. And you really think about what it is you've heard and really think about, Lord, how does this apply to me and how can I really apply this to my life? Because I'm not do- we're not doing this just to do it. As just some little ritual exercise just to be doing it. But we're doing it because I really want to get better in life. And I really want to make some sense out of what it is that I'm going through and understand why I am going through it. And again, my whole premise in all ministry, and I don't think I'll change, is I don't allow us allow me or allow you when you talk to me to continue to tell me your problem pointing the finger at somebody else. That That's not going to ever help your situation if you keep focusing on the other person without you looking at you. It's easy for you to look at others but until you start taking accountability And first look at you as the reason for your storm. Y'all sleep. I got to look at me. I got to look at my flaws. I got to look at my shortcomings. I got to look at in what area am I out of order? What area am I being disobedient? What God... What is it that you're requiring from me that I'm not giving to you? What are you asking of me that I am not giving to you that's causing this storm? It's easy to say it's because of you. It's because of some external thing, but until you look at you, because remember, God told Jonah to do one thing. Go to Nineveh. That's all. Go to Nineveh and cry out against it. You don't hear in the book of Jonah about God dealing with them. The book of Jonah is about one man and his disobedience to God and what God allowed him to go through to get him on the right track. Imagine if your storm that the only purpose of your storm is to reveal something to you about you. That you're not struggling because of somebody else. But somebody else may be struggling in life because of you. You brought the smoke to somebody. You you, you bringing that pressure to somebody. It's not that they bringing it to you. It could be 
It's happening because you in their life. It could be because of your actions in somebody's life or your non-actions. It could be because of you. So when we talk about Jonah, it teaches us about our disobedience and the consequences of our disobedience. Just go down there. I don't need you trying to outthink me. I don't need you trying to think like me. I don't need you thinking for me. I just need you to go down there and I need you to say what it is I tell you to say. How many of you done become disobedient because you're trying to think more, think, think, outthink God? You thought you had a better way, you had a better solution. You had you justified why you ought not do what your spirit telling you to do. You justified it. You really made yourself feel like Esau that you had that bad of a week to justify your whole weekend of drunkenness. You let somebody make you that mad that you found solace in the arms of somebody who you knew was not even worthy of you. Okay, it, it wasn't a woman. It was a slot machine. Uh, it was your favorite dealer at the card table. Jonah, 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 Jonah. Listen. God simply says, go down there. Now, understand this, is that Jonah wasn't just some dude off the street. This is somebody who had a relationship with God. This is somebody who had their high school graduation Bible, and they, every now and then they would read it. That this is not somebody who did not know anything about God. Come here, I need you to walk with me because you will think God don't talk to me that way. Yes, he does. And God talks to you because he knows that you know his voice. God talks to you because he knows that you have his spirit in you and he can talk to that spirit that's within you and he can talk to you and tell you what to do, where to go, who to do it with, who to say it to, where not to go. You don't, don't act like you don't know the voice of God. So when God told you to hush. Did, did, didn't he say the tongue is, is the small thing. But it's an unruly thing. Huh? Did he not say something so small can start such a big fight? And now you're wondering why your house is on fire? That mouth. That, that, that old tongue right there. It, 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 keeps, it keeps doing something. And, and, and so you wonder why. Lord, why am I in this storm? Had nothing to do with you being unsaved. Has nothing to do with you not knowing the verses of the Bible. It has nothing to do with you drinking, smoking, and all that kind of stuff. It's your disobedience to God. Now, I, I don't want to. I don't want to make anybody. I don't want you to feel justified in your wrong and your sin. But some of the stuff that you're going through is not because of what you're doing. It's because of what you won't stop doing when God told you to stop. So sometimes, sometimes you bring the storm in your life when God is telling you what to do and you acting like you don't hear God and then God says, okay, now let's show you. Let's, let, let's, let's get to a test. It is not because of what you perceive to be your sin. It's your, your sin then becomes, I told you to stop. 
cease and desist. Amen. And now you're being hard-headed. Mom said, what, a hard head? In, in the question right there? <laughs> I, I'm only I'm only exposing you to the life of Jonah. And now it has impacted all of these innocent bystanders. And the man say, listen, yeah, who you go to? We talked about this last week. Let me catch you up. The, the, you know, let me give you break, show you last week to bring you up this week. Whoever y'all are with, whatever y'all doing, go pray to your God. Now, I, I, I can't tell you who you pray to. I can't tell you who you talk to, how you talk to him. Whatever it is you got to do, whatever it is you need to do, go and talk to that God. Now, that's great when you in a, in a in mixed company. But now both of y'all praying to the same God. And y'all need to tell me these brothers can come go pray to whatever God they want to pray to. And they can come back and identify who the problem is. Watch this. I need y'all to hear this. So here it is. One versus many. One man served the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. These other folks served God knows what God they served. They went and prayed to whatever God they served and came back with the solution, with an answer. Tell me how both of y'all worship and serve the same God and go in your prayer closet, wherever your prayer closet is. Y'all don't saw that movie. Y'all now y'all got a war room. You don't went in your prayer closet, your war room, did whatever it is you gotta do. Everybody went to their corner, and when that bell ring, we come out, we still point fingers at each other. Somebody need to figure out what God is in that closet. Because there's no way. Well, there is a way. But it is unreasonable for two saved folk who serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How in the name of heaven, both of y'all sitting at the same table, drinking the same coffee, reading the same Bible, and neither one of us go open our mouth and say, baby, it was me, I'm sorry. You mean to tell me? Everybody praying in their car. On their way to work. After you left the house without saying goodbye, because you were in your feelings, but listen to your gospel music, <laughs> had your prayer and meditation, and you can get out of your car at work, walk in that building, and say good morning to the person you don't like, and out of all of that, no conviction said to you, pick up that phone and call and say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> that, that captain said, go to your God and let's come back, reconvene, and let's now talk about this. And that would be the reason why you used to I know, I'm just saying, I mean, if I could do all stuff over again, but that's, that's the one thing I really struggle, I struggle with, uh, telling him I'm sorry. Okay, let me do it a little further. Mm -hmm. And you mean you got that God, <laughs> so the other person heard God, they called to say I'm sorry, they tried to apologize, called you, they tried to talk to you about it, you mean you went in your closet, prayed to some God, 
and you looked at the call and said, I ain't answering. <laughs> Get somebody to draw away. <laughs> and you decided that instead of you embracing the apology, you trying to judge the sincerity of it. Talking about this the same lie you told the last five. <laughs> Is this helpful? Listen, beyond you get there, think about the storm that you are causing and the unnecessary removal of the stuff that you need to live this life because of your disobedience and the cause of an impending storm. Then came back and said, Jonah, you that dude. Jonah, you're that guy. Jonah was in the in, 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 down there sleep. Sleep, so what you what you doing? What you doing? Sleep, brother. We in the middle of a storm, and you got the audacity to be up in here sleep. Watch this. He knew he was the cause. <laughs> and he showed the less care and concern. Here's how you go know the guilty person. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They act like it ain't nothing wrong. But we have to get past that. You didn't see what part? <laughs> Where he was just acting like he didn't know, because he just went when he got on there, then he just go go down and go to sleep. But I'm I'm just I just missed the part where he didn't show. Because when he did realize what was going on, then he told the storm over. Before that, he was sleeping. Then he asked to go down there and wake him up. But did I? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But he was sleeping before the storm started raging, wasn't it? Or did I misread that? But even when the storm was raging. So I'm just saying what you're saying that he he was. Go to chapter one, verse four. Huh? Chapter one, verse four. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Mm -hmm. Then the American word freight, verse five, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea. To lighten the load, but Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship, had laid down, and was fast asleep. After I done got rid of my stuff. Exactly. Yeah. How many of you feel like you are in a ship and you done made all the change and all the adjustments you can make? And you trying to make the adjustments to be at harmony with a storm that you did not cause, but the person who done caused it is acting like it ain't nothing wrong. Yeah. And they make you think you crazy. <laughs> Am I teaching the text? Am I teaching the text? <laughs> He sleep. We praying, calling on the name of Jesus, and you still on your phone. She said they pulled up gospel. I done sacrificed, I done fasted, I've denied myself. I've stopped going where I would normally go. I'm trying to do the very best that I can. And you acting like everything is all right. You sleep. They whistling Dixie. 
they singing Kumbaya, my Lord. They don't know that you done already gone down to the lawyer, done talked about a retainer, done did everything, and you done told them what you need and what's the problem, that storm, and then they still acting like ain't nothing wrong. And you wondering why there is no peace nowhere. Because you're still thinking the problem is somebody else. <laughs> but it's you, Jonah. It's you, Jonah. You actually think it's all right. I'm trying to make an effort to go to church, and you still just content on going sleeping in on Sunday morning. And you don't understand why we're going through some of these issues and these problems in our lives. You're wondering why these children, the lives of the children, it's all in shambles. You're wondering why these children, they all acting like they crazy, bouncing off of a wall. Man, listen, you act like everything all right. Like, it's normal. Like, it's normal for our lives to be this way. Oh, it ain't no big thing. Like, it's normal for you to work 40 hours a week, 80 hours paycheck, to get paid, pay bills, and have nothing left. You just really think that's normal. And you ain't doing a doggone thing to fix it. You done dropped 50 pounds, now your blood pressure high, and your sugar out of control, and you got swelling. That ain't no indication to you. Don't eat salt. You rinse off canned vegetables. And still got help. That ain't no sign to you. Y'all quiet. I'm, 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 I feel like I'm bothering y'all. No, no, no. no, no, no. Listen. No, no, no. You can process it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you said because I rinse my vegetables. <laughs> 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 I rinse my vegetables all and I'm still, I'm still got this high blood pressure and everything that I need to still Yes, that ain't normal. <laughs> that ain't normal. Like, we got to argue every, everything turned into a full-blown argument. Now, people just ask you on your job, how you doing? They just say good morning. Like, that's normal. They go to the white Baptist church. You go to the black Baptist church. You don't worship your God. They don't worship their God. And y'all come to work, and you still don't get along with each other. That ain't normal. You can't have lunch with the white people. Because they white. Now you trying to talk about you ain't going to eat her cooking because she got cats and dogs. Sure ain't. Sure ain't. Sure ain't. Sure ain't. Sure ain't. Sure ain't. Y'all go. Y'all go. Ain't doing it. Ain't doing it. I understand. No. I understand. I, listen. I totally get it. I told. I told. I I totally. I totally. I totally. I totally get it that that woman done show pictures of her cat, done show pictures of her dog. They, 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 they walk it all on the couch. I know. Watch this. But you eat from Shaquanda house who got three-day-old dishes still in the same. Sorry, y'all don't have to repeat for this line. Y'all talking about, I don't do that. Y'all don't know. Y'all think because they black, they clean. Oh, so now I know it ain't done. Nah. Nah. Huh? Nah. So now, now y'all don't eat from them either. Now y'all don't eat from them. Y'all don't eat, from, don't eat potluck. We go to contradiction. Then what you blessing it for? So now, the power and anointing of God can't cover cat hat. Now the anointing and the power of God. See how you looking? 
Ah, now I got to change the subject. It does. And that's just a topic you don't want on your phone. That's an ingredient that's supposed to go in. Listen. It's like raisins and potato salad, man. I know. I know. But while she was, that cat was in the kitchen, that dog was in the kitchen, she was saying an amazing grace. And she can eat it. That's the way it looks. Here's all I'm telling you. That's the way Listen. Here's all I'm saying. I know. See, once 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 you once you hit that nerve, see. <laughs> what? Wow. It how? I know. It's a touch of something because that's what's ingrained in us, and so now we don't sit down in fellowship at work. And we become selective. And how do you know God said you're going to miss your blessing? Mm -hmm. Now you done made her feel bad. When you don't know the sacrifice that she may have had to make. To bring and provide for you. I know. It's it's okay though. It's okay. It's all not to no, it's potluck at the job. So don't bring the possums. Yeah, potluck just started. Potluck just started. But you gotta get it like you gotta be able to bring it. Yeah, you gotta buy it. How do you know when you go to hang out with your friends? How do you know the condition of what they have done to cook the food that you sit down to eat in their kitchen? How you know? You just assume. I laugh at people all the time in a restaurant. They go grab that plate, then they ask for a cup of hot water to do the silverware. But I ain't grabbed not no napkin to go up and get the handle to get the food. And come back to the table and pick up that chicken and eat it. You done transferred whatever of it. But you got a good clean set of for it, though. <laughs> 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 you know? Well, if the blessing go work at, at, the, at the buffet, why it can't work on the job? Yeah. So, so, so here it is. So here it is. So just as you want to be selective about something as small as that, you also justify and become selective on other areas of your life. Okay, let me move. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's sitting around like ain't nothing happened. He's asleep. And there are some of you sleep. And the next thing you know, Lord, how I got here? Lord, what happened? I ain't see this coming. What you mean you ain't see it happening? All of a sudden, boxes done started showing up at your house. It's the difference between an Amazon box and that Lowe's box. (laughs) 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 What you talking about? You ain't see the sign. The people don't, they don't slip. So I told you, like, you need to start getting to work on time, huh? Just wake up and come when you want to come. That's the sign. What, what, what do you mean? The storm, the storm came, but my God, you, you see it rocking and reeling and reeling and rocking, and you see us making these sacrifices. It ain't just happen. But when you sleep, you ignore it. 
You ain't paying no attention. Like you, like weight just crept up on you. <laughs> like you just came and hit you all at one time. You went to bed, you was a 12. <laughs> like all of a sudden, you were the clumps. Now you a 20. You used to have a whole bunch of stuff on this side of the belt. <laughs> <laughs> you done got so fat you gotta make other not your watch don't even fit in the little thing no more. Your wrist don't got there. Come on, I like these shoes. They comfortable. Yeah, because they're the only ones you can get the big swole feet. <laughs> Your ankles ain't acid just to be acid. Mm. <laughs> you got it <laughs> 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 I Well, y'all go tripping. I can get some out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why on the one side looks shiny, the other side looks shiny. <laughs> 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 There's a storm in our lives, and it's impacting other people, and other people are making sacrifices, changes, and adjustments, and here it is. We acting like it ain't nothing wrong. That's the sign of the guilty person, that when you can know that there's trouble in your family, in your house, in your life, on your job, and you just want to keep talking about other people and acting like it ain't nothing wrong, hey, y'all, you the problem. I'm trying to show you I want to help you. I'm trying to show you I want to assist you. I'm trying to show you that I care. I'm trying to show you that I, I want to be softer. I'm showing you I want to be gentler. I'm showing you I want to be romantic. But when you just keep acting like it ain't nothing wrong, like you ain't got to make no change, you ain't got to make no adjustment yourself, you're the problem. You sitting up talking, it's about time, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you for answering my prayer. And God sitting down looking like, sister, you just don't know. They ain't the problem. You the problem. And you think you're right because you got the word in you. Listen to this story. Jonah was not a stranger to the word of God. Jonah prayed. That brother was a prophet. That brother prayed. So don't you think that because you think you're praying more than somebody else that you're better than them? Because you can have some stuff still wrong with you that God is trying to fix. Don't, don't you become spiritually superior. Because they listen to hip-hop and you listening to gospel. You can still have some stuff wrong with you. Every sober person ain't right and ain't every drunk ain't wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get it all they say, man, what we got to do with you? Because we done got rid of all that stuff. What, what we got to do with you? <laughs> you? We sitting up in here sweating and getting rid of all that stuff. Man, you know how long it took me to get that? You sitting up here acting like it ain't nothing, watching us throw stuff overboard. You down there sleep. I know you heard that stuff hit the water. <laughs> you sitting up here, we rocking and reeling and reeling and rocking. We darn near seasick up in here. You know how long it took me to get my 600 credit score? <laughs> Go ahead and I just got to the point that, that I can go to Badcock and get something. Oh, all y'all 800 credit score people here. Okay, okay, y'all. 
You know how long it took me to get to this point in life that I can make seventeen fifty an hour? Man, you know how long it took me to get over the last hurt that I had in my life? And I, I said I would never get married again. I would never love again. Do you know how long it took me to get to this point that I would even step foot in a church? You know how long it took for me to actually look at you and see something inside of you and not be stuck on the curves and not just want to hit it and smash it in one night, but to actually want to build a relationship with you? Do you know how long it took for me to get to this point? And you don't make me throw it overboard? You know what I had to go through to get here? And I'm trying to do you a favor. I'm trying to help you in whatever the situation is you got in your life. And then when a storm comes, you going to turn your back on me? You know what kind of life I had. You know what my mindset was. You knew I've been abused. You know I've been mistreated. And you sitting up there asleep watching me throw everything I done worked hard to get. I'm telling you that the women after me. I try to tell you <clears throat> that I'm having these feelings of my past and I'm trying to tell you what I need from you. And I'm struggling. And instead of you hearing my cry, you still find comfort on your phone with your girlfriend. And all the hard work I done had to do. You just watch. Just watch. Just watch him throw it overboard. Just watch. Fifteen years of counseling. Eight years of just crying at night. I'm the guy where I can get off from work and just drive straight home and not have to detour and stop to a watering hole. You just watch me go, just watch me throw it over. You know how many good people you don't let go? Because you stuck on stupid. Stop it, but then go for y'all real quick. Come on, Jane. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say that he was still acting superior in this case too. Who? Um, Jonah. Okay. Because he was just laying there while they doing all this work too. Like he still was acting like. Because he knew. You say he's my book, but he knew. He, he knew, was and that's what they they just they yeah. they they. But when people do not want to take accountability and responsibility for the storm of their lives, <coughs> they just let people struggle. Here's what I need you to understand. You got to learn to start taking accountability and responsibility for your spiritual actions and your spiritual negligence and your spiritual disobedience. Pointing the finger at other people ain't going to cause this storm to cease. 
it's not until I start looking at me and taking spiritual inventory on how I am and what I've done according to the word of God are we going to start moving towards resolve. If there is no taking of responsibility, we'll never get to resolve. Is, is uh, is the world is the world built on um, junk? And when I say that is um, everybody, everybody in the world been through something. I mean, you know, growing up, that storm. So when do the storm ever stop? Like, okay, even want to go to church have a storm. And even in your household, you think you're doing it right, but you okay. Prime example: if you're married, you do you take your wife out, you you do everything, and then she act up like that storm is gonna be regardless of what. So, is it is it built in? Is, are we built in the world for that? Like when you grow up, is it built for that? Like the storm will never stop. The storm does stop. Huh? A storm does stop. No, it, it is stopped, but it still rain regardless. And, and, and what people under and what people have failed to understand. One, I can go back and I can just show you in verse number four. Go back to chapter one, verse four. Read it. But the Lord heard a, a Greek wind. Upon you got the King James version, don't you? But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the you sea. Change your version. So that the ship was like to be broken. Read it again. The wind. Oh, go ahead, Carl. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Why was the ship about to be broken? Because the, the storm was so bad. From the what? The winds. Where did the wind and the storm come from? The Lord. What did the Lord send? The wind. On the sea. And it affected the what? The ship. The ship. Y'all don't get it. The Lord spoke to the wind. The Lord sent the storm. Okay. And that storm affected the ship. The ship was being affected by a storm. That the Lord sent. Why are you? He ain't trying to kill you. I'm just trying to get your full attention. Because you've been disobedient. I'm trying not to kill you. So if you know you say sanctify, filled with the Holy Ghost, five baptized, and ain't playing, ain't fooling around, and you start having the storm, you need to pause and say, okay, Lord. Talk to me, Jesus. It ain't, it, ain't about, it ain't about trying to kill you. It sure will make it difficult. I'm trying to wake you up. <clears throat> so when you talk about a storm, here's why I try to tell you. You got to go and do research on some of these words sometimes is that people have put a negative connotation on a storm every time we use the word storm. Stop. Stop putting a negative connotation on storm. The only people a storm is bad for are those who don't have God on their side. If you have God on your side, and you encounter a storm, here's why you can celebrate. Because sometimes a storm will come and blow everything out of your life that don't need to be there. Sometimes a storm will come because who want to be with you in a storm? It will make you understand, identify those folk and those things that's fake and phony. Okay, finger in line, go outside after a storm. And what you're going to see on the ground 
are all the branches, all the twigs, all the leaves that were not securely attached to the main tree. Every weak branch gets blown away in a storm. And that's why I'm okay with the storms of my life because every weak friend go get blown away. Sometimes keeping a storm will purify your air. Having a storm also will cause you sometimes to have to rebuild. It'll tear down everything that's weak and make you have to build all over again. Sometimes a storm will come, and if you if you are in the lifeboat of God, it'll lift you up above your problems and carry you somewhere else. Some of you all ain't changed jobs until a storm hit. Some of y'all ain't started praying until you went through a health storm. You went through a financial storm. It's because of that storm you got your stuff together. You ain't start coming to Jesus because you got so sunk in depression because somebody walked off and left it in you. <laughs> Y'all heard it. He left it in me. <laughs> Am I teaching it? Yes. 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 What do they mean by um, how do they um, um, do a lot. How do they do that? They highly cast lots. What that mean? Hey, look, bones or like dice. That's why your grandma wouldn't let you roll dice. It's casting lots. It's gambling. It's so just it's casting lots. So it's it not on, I know it landed on him. Mm -hmm. So that means okay. Yeah. So you throw something down and wave it land. Mm -hmm. Like you ever see the little so old build spirit. Like they have, yeah, like they have old little stones and they'll roll them and they'll read the stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. He said, man, we don't do everything overboard. They said, man, what do we got to do with you? Until you start taking accountability and responsibility and start looking deep within yourself, you're going to continue to have to deal with the effects of this storm. Until you can get to that point and say, it's, it's me. It's because of me. Y'all okay. ain't got to throw nothing else away. Y'all can't listen. It's because of me. And until you can get to that place that you can say, you know what? The reason I'm not having the joy and the peace that we ought to have is because of me. You know why? It's because of me, y'all. You, you know why Friday night always go to hell when you in the group? Because if they tell the truth, you're like, man, we don't have an issue when he show up. You always the one that got to get drunk, get loud, and get us thrown out the club. <laughs> you, all, you, all, you always the one who want to go somewhere and you got to just act like you all top shelf, and then we got to split the bill. <laughs> <laughs> you it. It's four of us. It's four dudes. It's four females. But it's your attitude that got us got to leave by ourselves. Girl, it ain't got nothing to do with cause you big Cause the dude that was left over He liked big girls Cause they all stood in the corner And pointed you out And said, dog, I got that one You said, all right, well, I'll take that one And then somebody said, I'll take one for the team All you had to do was just smile And drink the drink it's you. That's why we done waited for this night and it's over before it even got started because of you. We ain't had this problem last week. I wish I had some real people up there. I took one for the team last week. Why you can't take one for the team this week? Why always got to be the one left out like that? Let's go. I'm done. <laughs>
<laughs> until, listen, until you take responsibility, we can't even have a good girl's night out. We can't even have a boy's night out without us, without us getting caught up in some dumb stuff because of your personality, because of your mouth, and because of your issues. Take responsibility. But I guess the one thing was sick with me too is that he wasn't even jump over the boat. He told him to pick him up and throw him from. I mean, why he wasn't even, he know he was going to do it. He wasn't even, he wasn't even jump. He said, pick me up and throw me. How many of y'all think, how many of y'all would think that that still occurs today. Yeah. That y'all want to make them throw you overboard instead of you doing the right thing and saying, you know what? He already know the solution. He already know if I get out of this boat, get in that water, y'all trouble go be over. Ooh. He already know. Listen, he already, did he not tell him the solution? He said, hey, y'all, y'all throw me overboard. All y'all problems go be over. Well, if you know you getting off of this boat, getting in that water is going to cause us problems, why are you going to make us throw you overboard? Why don't you go ahead and get your little happy tail up, step up on that ledge, and go jump? Hold on. I bind the spirit of you thinking committing suicide is the solution. We ain't talking about suicide because nobody died. But it does mean Instead of you trying to force somebody else to do what you know you ought to be doing, take accountability and responsibility and get yourself together. What do you mean? Because he's scared? He's scared. He's scared. No, no, no. He was being a part. I'm saying that. No, no, I'm saying that. When I say scared, is some people is scared to take that leap. Me and Michael together. I'm his problem, but I'm like, listen, I'd rather for him to tell me to go than I go. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some people are scared to do that. That's what I'm saying. Can you and that's why I'm saying accountability and responsibility. Right. You have to take responsibility for your own actions. Right. I don't want to go out Saturday night. It ain't my fault you keep asking me. You're going to keep asking me. Right. I can't get mad at you because you're asking me to go out on a, Friday, on a Saturday night. Because that's what you're going to do. So I can't keep blaming you because you go just keep on asking me. My thing is, at some point, I'm eventually going to have to just cut you off. Well, he keep saying no long enough to cut you off. Instead of you stop asking me, you go force me to have to make a decision. Does that make sense? Yeah. Read between the lines. People avoid you. That might be time not to leave the Listen, just do right instead of trying to make somebody leave you. Instead of trying to make somebody else divorce you. Instead of you trying to make them people fire you so that you can go talk about they fire me. I ain't quit. Yeah. Man, when you don't take accountability and responsibility, you're going to tell my man, just throw me overboard. Well, you already know what's going to be the solution to this. Why don't you just go ahead and do what you got to do? Why don't you go ahead and separate yourself from the group? Stop putting the group in a bad in a bad situation. Stop putting the family in a bad situation. Stop putting the, the job on a bad situation. Why keep killing your credit? You know what the problem is. Don't make us have to get in a fight. For you to have to do something. Don't make me have to. Listen, stop. No, li listen. Why is it now you want to do right when you think I'm talking to somebody on the phone? Now you want to do right. Yeah. Now, oh, now all of a sudden, 
Now you want to start straightening up. Because you think somebody's sniffing around me because somebody else done did this. Now you all in your feeling. Now you want to get right. Why we got to go through all that? Why y'all make God have to cause a storm in your life for you to do the right thing to get your attention? He got to get you, he got to fire you from every job. I mean, he got to just keep letting you go to payday advances for you to realize you ain't being a good steward over your money. Like, girl, dang, how long you got to get Section 8? And I guess the thing is, this is still after we was deliberately went out of our way to go the other direction. Yes. Any question, man, y'all? Yeah, you know. Real time. Real time. How about you say, God, you know what? Lord, it's me. Man, how about you just really get to that point earnestly within yourself to just honestly say, God, I know I'm out of your will. And nothing is working out. I got a storm everywhere I go. It's chaos. It's conflict. God is me. God said, I'm trying to deliver you out of that way of living and life. But you just want to keep going in the wrong direction. You're getting too old for that. Then when God tell you, girl, you just don't look right in that no more. Now you want to be all in your feelings. And now you want to fight. And now you want to throw stuff and break stuff. And now, he said, well, just say, Lord, I surrender. Don't make nobody else have to check you. Don't, don't make nobody else have to be, keep being shaded to get your attention. Don't, don't stop living life so that God has to cause there to be a great storm for you to be the woman, to be the man that you need to be. You already know what you require. How about you just say, Lord, here I am. I've gotten, I, I, I said a long time ago, I was like, Lord, I want to learn and to hear what you're telling me without my world having to crash apart. I want to be where I, I, look, I, I, man, I hear God telling me what not to do, and I still go do some stuff. I do. I, 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 I still do some stuff I know I ought not do, and I hear God say it. But I tell you what, it don't, it, it, ooh, ooh. I ain't got to let that be no big storm when we start losing some stuff. <laughs> I know how to self-check. I, I know I know how to self-check without having the, there to be a storm. I know. I know when I done had too good of a weekend when that bank account looking shady. Mm. I can't use a card no more. I'm rolling quarters. <laughs> Y'all got that? Honestly, you're not in your life in these next 30 seconds. Really think about it. And think about the areas of your life that you're encountering a storm. And just be honest and say, God, I'm I'm possibly the problem. It's nobody else. They're not just picking on me just to be picking on me. They don't want to be around me, not just to be around me. God, I am too negative. God, I am too pessimistic. God, I am too critical. God, I'm, I'm really not appreciative. I really don't pay them that much attention. God, I really do do more for people outside than I do for the people inside. God, I'm really not attentive to the, the needs of the people I call my friends and my family. God, they're not 
unjust. God, it's me not being who you called me to be. And it's me not doing what you've called me to do. And God, I'm not going to make anybody throw me overboard. But I'm going to make a sound decision that I need to be in your will. God, I ain't going to pray no more that you move my mountain. Because I know if a, a mountain needs to be moved, I got the power to move it myself. God, I don't want to have a heart attack. God, I don't want to have a stroke to start doing the things to be in good health. God, I, I, don't, I don't want to have to go through mediation for a divorce for me to get myself together. God, I, I don't want to have to go through stuff with my children to know that I need to be a better mother or a better father. I got to take responsibility. And I got to be accountable for the storm that's going on in my life. No more blaming the people in my past. No more blaming what has happened to me as a child as to why I'm not doing any better. No more blaming my mom. No more blaming my daddy. No more blaming people who don't have my, my, my skin color. God, I'm taking responsibility and being accountable for me. I got to do better. God in our lives. We're all like sheep who have gone astray. But God, we repent tonight. take personal responsibility and we hold ourselves accountable forgive us oh God forgive us for tempting you for trying you Forgive us tonight. Forgive us for blaming others for our shortcomings, our missteps, and our mishaps. Forgive us of accusing other people for us not obtaining our goals. Help us to see us. Help us to see us as you see us. Take us, oh God. Mold us. Shape us. Fill us tonight. But make us better. Make us better tomorrow than we are today. And God give us the strength.
that we may become the men and the women who you've created us to be. And God, get your glory. And so we give ourselves to you. The image of Jonah, we throw ourselves overboard and put our lives in your hand. And we do thank you for your grace. And we do thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name. Thank you.